Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the energy usage of a modern Energy Star rated refrigerator, and I'm going to be talking about this in reference to running it from, say, a generator or a portable power station. So I have a playlist on some power stations and different other tests I've done, and I'll put a link below to that in the description if you want to check those out. And I may also mention some products in this video and also put a link to those products below in the description too. So the fridge I have is a over five year old GE profile fridge. It's a counter depth fridge. It's 23.1 cubic feet. And I don't know how this rates in comparison to other refrigerators, but I'm guessing it's pretty efficient. It has LED lighting and such in it. So what I'm talking about in this video won't pertain to every fridge. I'm just giving this as an example. Everyone will have to analyze the performance of their own fridge, but this will give you a ballpark of how it could work with your generator or power station. So I'm going to be tracking this with a TP-Link CASA Wi-Fi plug with energy monitoring. And as I said earlier, you can find videos in my playlist on this. And I have that connected into the Home Assistant software. So this allows me to monitor and log the energy usage. So what I have pulled up here is the energy usage for a little more than the last 24 hours. So we have yesterday, March 11th at midnight to this morning at 9 a.m. So it'd be 24 hours plus nine hours. And here we can see the usage. So this is in watts. So this goes up to 800 on the chart. And if we look down here, we can mouse over this and we can see this is using about 65, sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little lower watts when it cycles. So when it stops cycling, it's using 4.5 watts. So that would be the standby power. So that would be the circuitry that's monitoring the fridge itself. So this is going to call for cooling. It's going to turn on, it's gonna run at around 70 watts and then it's gonna drop down. So we see here at about 6 a.m. it pops up to 182 watts. So I'm not sure exactly what that is. It might have called for more cooling somehow. I'm not sure, but that's kind of when we might be up in the morning getting things out of the fridge. Now it does have lights in the fridge. I don't think the lights would take that much because they are LED lights. And then we go along and then around Let's see if we can find the time here. 2 p.m., it went up to 644 watts, and it did that from, let's see, about 208 to 224. So what I'm guessing that is, is probably the built-in defroster. So the built-in defroster in a fridge is a heater, and heaters take a lot of energy. So there was a short time period here where it took quite a bit of energy. So I have a smaller power station that can run at 300 watts, which would easily run this fridge, except for this part. I think it can peak out at 600 watts, but I don't know if I can do it for any significant amount of time. So my small power station maybe could run the fridge, but if it hit that defroster, cycle it might shut it down. Now if you're looking at a generator even a small generator can probably output the 600 watts to power this unless you have a really small generator but I think even the smaller portable generators could do that. So then we drop down here here's 113 watts and then we kind of get back into our regular cycle. There's a couple little peaks here maybe that's someone opening the door like here it's at 11 watts that's 50 watts it's hard to say. Here's another 182 watts at 6 a.m. so I'm not sure what that is that seems like it's doing that every day at the same time. So let me expand this range out let's just look at a week maybe. So here we have that peak at 600 watts, March 7th, March 9th, March 11th. So it looks like it's running that defrost every two days. So there's no way to know when it's running this defrost. I mean, there's no way to set it. So you could potentially run this from a small power station if you know it's not going to run this defrost. And I don't know if I unplugged it and plugged it back in, if that would reset the two-day timer. If that was the case, certainly if the power went out and you plugged it into a power station, you'd have two days before it would run the defrost again. There might also be some kind of sensor that triggers it. I'm not really sure. So now let's go to the total consumption. And I was hoping to get to the beginning of this peak, but I didn't seem to be able to. Or maybe I can, let's see. Yeah, that's still eight kilowatt hours down there. But we can take a period of time and we can look at it here. So here we start out at the bottom at eight kilowatt hours. And if we go up here, my large power station will do one and a half kilowatt hours or so, which is right about here. So that's March 7th at 724 AM. And this is March 6th at just around midnight. So what we're saying is my large power station would be able to run this about one day and then seven hours or so. And this is just an estimate here. So there are many factors involved. If you open the fridge more, it's going to to use it more. If it's hotter outside, it's going to run more. And I should mention my large power station is a Blue Eddy AC200P. So a large power station like that should be able to run it for over a day and it can easily handle that peak too. So to summarize, if you're looking for a power station or generator to run a fridge, at least with my fridge, it runs at about 70 watts on a regular basis intermittently. And then every once in a while it peaks up with a high of, you know, around 630 watts. So you want to look at a system that will handle that. That's just running the fridge. If you have a generator and you're running other appliances, you'll need to add those onto this. But but fridge for me is probably one of the most important because if the power goes out, we'll lose the food in the fridge, which can cost a lot of money. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.